I'd like to welcome you to the joint service of St. John's Lutheran Church and Peace Lutheran Church of Pico Rivera. Today is our third Sunday of Advent, and we're thankful to God that you're able to join us today to worship. Your presence with us is a, truly a gift from God, and we hope and pray that he will bless our worship time together. I am Pastor Mike Grobelch, and I will be leading the service today. If you would like to receive copies of the bulletin and sermon prior to our service, please email us at P-E-A-C-E-L-U-T-H-C-H -E -E at gmail.com or DM us on either of our Facebook pages, Peace Lutheran Church of Pico Rivera or St. John's Lutheran Church, North Long Beach. Please join in wherever you are on the responsive readings during the course of the service. in our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning in verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of faint spirit, and they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of, the, of our Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense 
and I will make them an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, as for the earth brings forth its sprouts, and all the gardens cause what is sown it in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. This lesson for today comes from the book of First Step of Seth Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the ways of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing, if you are neither Christ or Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized with water. But among you stands one who you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of our Lord.
words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. I don't know how many of you have ever watched one of those makeover shows on TV. My wife used to watch one, I think it was entitled What Not to Wear. The idea of the show was they would take a woman whose wardrobe and appearance wasn't all that great and they would help her pick out some new clothes and do a makeover and a haircut and those sort of things. So at the end of the program, the woman was looking like a million bucks and she would be absolutely delighted with the results. A makeover can make a big difference. Well, today I want to tell you about an even better makeover. The good news is that it's for you. It's for all of us and it's free of charge. This makeover will make the biggest difference in your life and you will be absolutely delighted with the results. I want to tell you now is this is the Messiah that gives you a makeover. You're the Messiah who gives you a makeover. Think about that. That is what's described in the Old Testament lesson for today. From Isaiah 61, we first meet the Messiah. Second, we hear about the makeover he is about to give us. And third, we respond with rejoicing and exaltation. First then, when we meet the Messiah, I guess I should explain by what I mean by the word Messiah. It's a Hebrew word. It means anointed. In the Old Testament, when someone was anointed, that person literally had oil poured over their head. Now, this was some sort of fragrant olive oil, but it was the anointing that was the important part. This signified that God had chosen this person for a very specific reason, for a very specific purpose. And when God had chosen that person to hold that important office, Aaron would anoint them with oil. Now, we all remember that David was anointed when the Lord chose him to be king over all of Israel. The prophet Samuel came and anointed David by placing oil on his head. And that signifies God's favor, God's choice, his power and blessing, that God's spirit would rest upon this one. David, to hold this office, that of king, this was the point of the anointing. Well, later on, when David was king, the Lord told David that one of his descendants would be even a greater king. He would have an everlasting kingdom. This son of David to come, prophesied and promised by God, became known as the Messiah or the Anointed One. He hadn't come yet, but Israel was looking forward to his coming. With that, and then with that context, let's take our text in Isaiah 61. He says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is our Messiah speaking. Listen to those wonderful words. First, he says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon him. This is his anointing. He is saying that he is the Messiah, the anointed one for who the Jews, the Jews had waited for so long. And he is also proclaiming that he is the fulfillment of God's promise. And when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by John, we read the following. The Holy Spirit came down out of heaven and rested upon him. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Father's voice affirmed his choice when he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Clearly, Jesus is being anointed into his office of Messiah. Early on in his ministry, 
Jesus was in the uh, synagogue at Nazareth, and he unrolled the scroll of Isaiah, and he read the very words of our text. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. God coming to us. God in our midst. God Emmanuel. So Jesus is the Messiah. He is the one that Isaiah foresaw in our text. By the way, if you really want to look at it, the Greek equivalent of the word Messiah is Christ. Christos means the anointed one. So Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, who will do a great makeover over you and me. Now let's hear about what that makeover is going to look like. And this is our second point of today's sermon. The Messiah tells us the makeover he gives us is to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. So there's a before picture and an after picture. The before picture is rather sad and drabby and shabby, and we all appear that way. The miseries of this life have taken their toll on us. We're in a state of mourning, and ashes were a sign of mourning. We have a faint spirit, weak and worn down. This is a picture of us, my dear friends. We are those who mourn in Zion. We mourn over our own sins and sinfulness. They weigh us down. They afflict our conscience. And when we mourn over the wear and tear of just living in this sin-fallen world, it takes a toll. We mourn the death and loss of things we love. We sorrow over the sin and sadness we see all around us. It's a grievous thing. This world really is a veil of tears. But the Messiah promises us with an after picture. He will do his makeover on us. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life, eternal life. This is a beautiful headdress indeed. And even now, Jesus gives us the oil of gladness to refresh our spirits as we travel through this dry and dusty wilderness. He clothes us <coughs> excuse me, with the garment of praise, praise to God from all from whom all blessings flow. The Messiah gives us this makeover free of charge, free to us, but at a great price to him. He was, they placed a scarlet robe on him. He was beaten and flogged. And if you ever looked into the history of the Romans, beating and flogging just doesn't give you an adequate description his back was torn up by a whip that had eight cords, and in the eight cords they had bits of bone and, um, embedded in it so they would uh, tear the flesh as, it, as he was hit from it. He was stripped of his dignity when they stripped him of his garments. And then finally they nailed him to a cross. This was the price he was willing to pay for your salvation. This was the blessing, the blessed exchange that the Messiah undertook to give you your makeover. He took your sins and gave you his righteousness. He took your death and gives you his life. It's the same life that triumphed over the grave on Easter morning and now lives forevermore. What a truly magnificent makeover this is. And so when we respond and we say yes to the dress, faith is simply saying yes to the dress that Jesus so freely gives us. And that's our third point for this morning. Listen now what, to what we have in our reading in Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. 
My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, you were clothed and covered with the robe of Christ's perfect righteousness. When God sees you now, he sees your righteousness, your radiant, your pure, and your clean because of all, because of the Messiah's makeover. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and a bride adorns herself with her jewels, when people get married, they are usually dressed to the nines, to use an old phrase. The bridegroom is wearing some of his fanciest clothes. On his wedding day, he is really and truly a sharp-dressed man. And the bride? Whoa! Radiant, resplendent, gorgeous, looking her loveliest. That's the kind of makeover Christ does for his church. The Apostle Paul puts it like this in Ephesians. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Christ has clothed you with the garments of salvation. This is our daily dress. Each new day we put on Christ and live as his holy people. It changes the way we live. It takes away all the old filthy clothes of sin and meanness and selfishness. And that's not what we wear. We put on our new garments of love and kindness, forgiveness and generosity, clothed with Christ, robed in baptismal newness of life, we live as God's holy people. The Messiah's makeover has this effect on you and me. And so as we rejoice for all of these reasons and more, we rejoice and exult and we say with the prophet Isaiah, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. O bride of Christ, rejoice, exult, raise, raise thy voice, rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteousness and having salvation. The king is the Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus Christ, who is coming to us. He's coming at Christmas to do his big makeover job. He will come again on the last day when we will see with our eyes the glorious results of his mighty makeover. Until then, we will see with the eyes of faith, saying yes to the dress our Messiah gives us. When the Messiah gives you a makeover, it is truly something to rejoice in. May we all rejoice this Christmas season in what Christ gives us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, <clears throat> God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us spend time now in prayer. For the richness of his creation and for his grace to sustain what he has made, for the bounty of resources that sustains our daily lives, and for the good fruit of the earth by which all creatures are fed and nourished, let us give thanks to the Lord. For the commands that protect us against harm and guide us into all that is good and pleasing to the Lord, for the gospel by which we enjoy forgiveness and life, and for courage to share this blessed word with those who do not know the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For the government and order in our land and in the world, for those who lead us in this nation and for all leaders of all nations, and for the blessing of justice, the protection of life and the promotion of virtue, let us pray to the Lord. For our life together as God's people in this place, for the church throughout the world, for missionaries planting new churches, and for our unity and doctrine and life, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer of illness of body and mind, for those who sorrow at the loss they love, for those there near death, and we especially uphold Connie, who is uh, suffering and is uh, suffering weakness and would like her strength restored. Let us pray to the Lord. For the holy communion of Christ's body and blood, for the faith to receive this gift with joy, for the will and desire to amend our sinful lives, and for grace to show forth in our lives the fruit of Christ's redemption, let us pray to the Lord. For thankful hearts that we may not forget the poor and those in need, for generosity that we may supply from our abundance those in want and for the tithes and offerings we bring in gratitude for all of God's gift. Well, let us pray to the Lord for our vocations and occupations, for the gift of labor and the privilege of enjoying the fruits of that labor, and for the un unemployed and underemployed, let us pray to the Lord. In faithful re remembrance of the saints who went before us, for the grace to rejoice in the mercies that the Lord showed them in their lives, and for the promised day of reunion when the dead in Christ shall be raised and we shall join them in everlasting light and life, let us give thanks to the Lord. In all things, O Lord, grant to us grace, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but to honor you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. On our own, we have nothing that will endure, but you have granted to us all things in Christ and the life that does not end. Hear your people for the sake of and in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And God's people said, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.
go in peace and serve the Lord. <clears throat> As always, uh, there are a number of people involved in the production of this uh, of this work, and especially our ASL interpreter, Maria Coronado. Many thanks to her and our director of music this week at St. John Lutheran Church, Rory Selden, who provided our music. If you would like to join us for an in-person uh, worship service at Peace Lutheran Church, we have two services, one at 9 a.m., the second at 11. The 11 o'clock service is in Spanish. Uh, at St. John, uh, we uh, meet at 12.30 p.m., and we invite you to join us at one of these two places. May God's perfect peace be with you this week and always. And as a note, to help us share the word, please hit like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you.